So, um, in principle, how uh, this the larger sector sorry's uh, have taken on test exercise, um, and uh, one of the biggest in Britain since uh, seven seven, I believe. Um, how so? How's having this one based uh, base centre improved the ability to respond? Uh, but uh, it, it would have been very problematic indeed to have tried to manage from a strategic perspective and indeed probably a tactical perspective this particular exercise operation, if you like, from the, the facilities and police headquarters simply because the, if you like, the scale. Of, of the resources required to manage an incident of, of this nature and of this size is such that it would just overwhelm the, those facilities, whereas clearly here it's been purpose built and designed for the sort of scale of incident that, we, uh, that, that you can now realistically expect to, uh, to face, and it's performed exactly as we, uh, as we envisage that it would, and it's, it's done what it's designed to do. So in terms of day-to-day -day operations, obviously incidents like this are hopefully very, very rare. Um, how will the Joint Command Centre work in terms of how will it operate from day to day? In truth, the same principles apply here, you know, across Merseyside at, at, at any given time. You take this week, for example, one Champions League football match attended by just under 50,000 people on Tuesday night. There's a, there's a Europa League match tonight to be attended by probably around 40,000 people. So. You know, those, those events of that sort of size and scale on Merseyside are, are, are weekly occurrences. Also, I guess, for the, for the police in the sense that they have to manage public order, clearly from a fire and rescue perspective, we hopefully we never have to respond to incidents like that, simply for the, the ambulance service. But the sort of the day-to-day -day operational management of incidents, again, the, the building was designed because this, this hosts our call handling and dispatch facilities as well. And it's been it's designed to reflect experiences of others over the years because we we visited lots of uh, lots of other services around the country, some of which have undertaken similar initiatives as this to learn lessons from what they've done to make sure that the, the facility that we've ended up with here is the uh, you know is, is, is as functional as fit for purpose as it can be. So I mean, there are other agencies, uh, other. Um Services that have looked at multi agency working and have some setups in place, but this this facility arguably puts Merseyside ahead of the rest of the country in terms of uh, level of co location, level of cooperation. Um, what what prompted you to, to make the steps to to invest in such a try? Back in uh, back in two thousand and ten, the the uh, it was the civil disturbances. Sorry, two thousand and eleven rather was the civil uh, civil disturbances. Which the that operation operation day went was from the we had some very significant issues here in the, in Merseyside in Liverpool predominantly, but in other areas of uh, of Merseyside and uh, myself and uh, ACC Andy Ward were the strategic commanders for that particular operation from police and fire and indeed Dave Kitchen who is the the Amazon service strategic commander today was also for the the, the and. Uh, I think we, we, we recognised at that point that we were dealing with, uh, over the course of a couple of nights, in excess of a thousand incidents in the fire and rescue service, simply and obviously for the police. And that was a, uh, that was a prolonged uh, and, uh, and, and sustained operation, which was very demanding in terms of, uh, certainly in terms of the, the command and control uh, that, it, uh, that, that, that it necessitated. And it was, you know, it was absolutely clear to us that we, uh, you know, at that point, that yeah, clearly we, did, I believe, we did in a very effective job, and clearly we did because we stopped. Uh, we stopped. You did not see the sort of levels of, of, of damage in, in Liverpool as you did say in London, for example. We took a very, a very proactive approach in making sure that that uh, that that was the case. But what was absolutely evident is that we were, you know, the, the, we were all together on the, the seventh floor. You know, effectively in the call handling and dispatch yeah. facility. We we had no breakout rooms to speak of. It was problematic, which is an understatement really. And from that point, we saw then there was the opportunity with the demise of the regional control project that Merseyside could, instead of from a fire rescue service perspective, taking the regional route, we could opt for a Merseyside specific solution and partners from Merseyside police and 
accepting that North West Ham will say this green colours a, a much bigger footprint at regional rather than the, rather than Merseyside specific, but it still gave us that opportunity to co-locate the operational planning teams from the three services here, which of course are the teams that operate the strategic and tactical coordination groups and along with partners from the five local authorities we managed to create here a, uh, a facility which, which isn't just used for uh, the management of incidents but it's also used for day-to-day -day business in terms of contingency planning and uh, the effects of that I think are evident now yeah. during the, the exercise. Yeah, it's a really, a really good setup. And um, over a similar time period, uh, Jessup was set up a couple of years ago um, to push through a similar interoperability agenda. How do you feel that um, that setup has has helped support the the joint plan setup here? I think Jessup complements what we've done here. You know, you, you could argue that the that, that certainly the all five of the the, the, the Jessup doctrine principles the co-location, communication, coordination, you know, shared shared uh, assessment of risk, shared situational awareness, that, that is all dealt with through having this facility. We are all here in the same room. You know, the the co-location issue is, uh, is dealt with in that sense. The communication issue, this isn't this doesn't then come down to, to issues such as like there's air wave and interoperability channels. Mm -hmm. I can just get up and go and speak to my yeah. opposite number in there. Uh, in you know in in because uh, he's in an office a couple of doors down from where I am, those very simple practical steps often are, are the most effective in terms of uh, of making it work. Certainly at uh, at this level on the tactical level.